Okay, Jason, this is the quick overview of how to create a Google Calendar. I am going to assume that you have already created a Google account. So once you have your Google account, across the top on this black toolbar are all the different Google tools that you now have with that Google account. So click on Calendar. Once you click on Calendar, you'll notice over on the left side, it will show you a list of all the calendars that you have access to. So I have two calendars in my account that I have created, and then down here are other calendars that have been shared with me. The main one that has information on it is this flat classroom project. So this particular calendar, many people have had editing rights to. For you to create a new calendar, go over here to this drop-down box by My Calendars and say Create New Calendar. My guess is you want to give it a name like Central Iowa Cups. You can go ahead and put a description in here. Um, and maybe you don't want to put 900 because this might work for, for here on out. I don't know. You don't really have to worry about location, but do make sure that your time zone is selected to Central Time Zone. Um, you don't have to make this calendar public, I don't think. Um, so I'll show you some other ways that you can share it without making it public. This is one way, is that you can put individual email addresses in here. So I'm going to put in Andy's Gmail account that he never checks in there. And notice then that I can choose what type of permissions I want to give him for this calendar. So right now, all Andy can do is see the event details. My guess is for most of the team, that's what you're going to want to select. However, if you want coaches to be able to um, add events or change this, the events that you have on the calendar, you might want to give change these privileges for certain people. So you can say manage changes and manage sharing, um, just make changes to events. Uh, but you're not probably going to want this see only free slash busy and high details. My guess is you'll, you'll choose this see all, all event details. So I'm going to go ahead then and say create calendar. You can continue to add people here. Uh, the problem will be is if you put their email addresses in, if you share it with something other than a Gmail account, they're not going to be able to see it. So I'll show you another way on how those people without a Gmail account can still see the calendar and possibly bookmark it. The easiest though is if everybody has a, a Google account. So from here you say create calendar. So there it is, Central Iowa Cups. So I can click on that um, to select it. So when it's colored, that means I've selected it. I'm going to deselect my flat classroom project so we don't see the events on that calendar. OK, to create an events, let's say right now you just want everybody to block off these weekends that you're talking about where we have tournaments. Let's say we have a tournament this weekend, and you want Friday, Saturday, Sunday blocked off because you don't know times of the tournament yet. I would say um, just click on that day. And we can put baseball tournament, and maybe you know the, the location. So say, and I think you do know the location, so put Des Moines. Um, and then click Edit Event. Edit Event gives you more options. So now I'm going to say All Day, and it goes from, say, the 15th. And if you want it to span um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'll say through the 17th, um, where, if this one is in, Des Moines. So I guess if you don't want that in your title, you don't have to. Um, if you want to give a description or anything that we might need to know, um, you could, like maybe a website where we can find out um, details about this tournament, or if you think um, I'm sure we'll play on Friday night, um, and you know only Sunday if we are in the top bracket, or whatever you might want to put. Um, if you want to kind of organize this so all of our baseball tournaments are red and practices are blue, you could color code it. So I'll just make this red for demonstration purposes. And then once you've created your event, you say save. And there it is on the calendar. Um, the same thing can happen with a practice. So let's say um, Thursday at 7 o'clock to 8, we're going to have practice. So the way I got from 7 to 8 was I just clicked and dragged, then click Edit Event, and maybe I'll put Baseball Practice from 7 to 8, where um, Valley High School, 
and if you do end up getting multiple calendars make sure that that Central Iowa Cubs calendar is always selected um, maybe you want to say hope to be outside by this date or um, pitchers will stay an extra 30 minutes or whatever okay so now if we want to change the event color because it's practice to um, blue instead of red we can and then say save uh, so once you share this everybody will have access to all these things that you put in here so if we as parents bookmark it we don't have to email you like I did today asking you for the complete schedule or you can make uh, changes as you go um, now remember I mentioned earlier that if someone doesn't have a Google account how are they able to see it by just sharing it through email go up here to the settings of your calendar and then from here we want to um, click on calendars and then um, I have three here so I'm going to choose um, shared edit settings for the Central Iowa Cubs and then from calendar I'm going to choose calendar details and go to calendar address so this gives me the kind of long ugly um, calendar web address that I would share with families so I can click on that HTML there it is you can copy and paste this whole ugly thing into an email message and we could have it so just copy and paste that into your email and then no matter what email the address they have they'll be able to get to the calendar now typically I don't like to share those big ugly email addresses and so what I do is I use a site called tinyurl.com so this is another step you can definitely stop here if you want or I will show you how to use tinyurl.com this is really handy for me with students and what this does is it allows you to shorten a web address so um, I copied that web address from Google I right click and I'll paste it in here and then I can give it a custom alias so um, parents website that they go to would be this HTTP colon tinyurl.com whack and I could say maybe Central Iowa Cubs baseball I'm not going to actually put that in there in case um, you want to use that, but then I would say make tiny URL, and if it's not available, it'll give me something else um, that's just random letters and numbers, and if you don't like that, many times I don't, so I'll go back and I'll try something else again that's related to my topic. So I'm not going to use this in case you like the CIC baseball. So um, that's an option on how to share it. I think that's um, all you need to know to get started. Uh, let me know if you have more questions or if you run into some snags. As you're testing it, I can definitely uh, be your tester if you'd like to.